there is an ongoing discussion about the scientific method, and specifically the way it is defined by Quantum Eraser. Many have argued that his definition is wrong, that it is far too limited and that it's based on cherry-picked citations from sources that aren't scientific at all according to Quantum Eraser himself. In this video, I won't go into those arguments. I want to approach the matter from a different angle. Quantum Eraser has given examples of what he considers to be real proofs according to the scientific method Quantum Eraser style. One of them is this. Water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit, that is 100 degrees Celsius at sea level, that is at an atmospheric pressure, of 101.325 kPa or 14.7 psi. I have asked Quantum Eraser repeatedly to explain how this proof was accomplished in this order. What was the natural phenomenon observed? What was the formal hypothesis? What was the null hypothesis? What was the independent variable? What was the dependent variable? How was the experiment conducted? The first time he answered me, calling me, another brain surgeon, but didn't give any of the specifics I asked for. A second time he claimed to have answered my question and added, and my response was more than appropriate, again. So I had to analyze the problem myself. QE stated the following about a hypothesis. A scientific hypothesis is based on cause-effect reasoning. A scientific hypothesis does not merely state X and Y may be related, but explains, why they are related. So the most important question here is, what is the cause and what is the effect? There are some possible causes of the phenomenon that water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit, or 100 degrees Celsius at sea level, etc. First, there is heat. Then there is temperature. And there is atmospheric pressure. And there are several possible effects, but the only acceptable effect is that water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit, that is 100 degrees Celsius at sea level, that is at an atmospheric pressure of 101.325 kPa or 14.7 psi. Let's begin with heat as the cause. The hypothesis would go somewhat like this. If applied heat to water, then it will boil at 212 degrees Fahrenheit etc. In this case, heat is the independent variable, that is the variable the researcher has to manipulate himself. However manipulating heat will not alter the outcome of your dependent variable, the water boiling point, applying more and more heat to the water will only affect the speed with which the water boils, not the fact that it will boil, at which temperature the water will boil or at which atmospheric pressure. So heat cannot be the independent variable. Then we have temperature as the cause. The hypothesis would go somewhat like this. If the temperature of water reaches 212 degrees Fahrenheit, or 100 degrees Celsius, at an atmospheric pressure of 101.325 kPa, etc., it will start to boil. In this case, temperature is the independent variable, that is the variable the researcher has to manipulate himself. You can manipulate the temperature, but then arises the problem of how the experiment would have to be performed. It will have to be by measuring the temperature. According to quantum eraser a measurement can never be a scientific experiment, but even if we put that aside, what is the scale with which you measure the temperature? The Fahrenheit scale isn't very scientific, since one of the checkpoints is the average body temperature of a healthy grown man. No scientist uses Fahrenheit as a unit of temperature. He uses Kelvin, and for convenience, Celsius, but never Fahrenheit. But the 100 degrees Celsius is even worse. You see, 100 degrees Celsius is defined as the temperature at which water boils at sea level. So you set out to prove that water boils at 100 degrees Celsius at sea level, you measure the temperature with a thermometer, where 100 degrees Celsius is defined as the temperature at which water boils at sea level, and you say, presto, I have proven that water boils at 100 degrees Celsius at sea level. But probably, there will also be flurfers who claim temperature is only a concept, 
a man-made construct, and they will base that conclusion on a reference like this. So the only thing left is atmospheric pressure. The hypothesis would go somewhat as follows. When the atmospheric pressure is 101.325 kPa, or 14.7 psi, then water will boil at 212 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius. In this case, atmospheric pressure is the independent variable, that is the variable the researcher has to manipulate himself. However, Quantum Eraser has said himself that to reject slash falsify the null, you must be able to physically manipulate the independent variable. It is impossible for a researcher to physically manipulate the atmospheric pressure, without creating man-made, and therefore non-natural, circumstances. Hold on, a glober would say, you can manipulate the atmospheric pressure, by changing the altitude. But that also is a no-go with Quantum Eraser. The altitude would have to be the independent variable, which means it is the cause, but altitude in itself cannot be the cause. Besides, if atmospheric pressure, or altitude, at sea level, would cause water to boil at 212 degrees Fahrenheit, everyone living near the sea, would have his eggs boiled for free. And last but not least, you want to prove that water boils at 100 degrees Celsius at sea level, which suggests, especially because you define what you mean with sea level, by adding very specific conditions, like the 101.325 kPa or 14.7 psi, that water boils at that temperature exclusively under those circumstances. Otherwise, the statement wouldn't mean anything. So you not only will have to prove, that it does so at sea level, but that it doesn't do so, under any other circumstance. It's all about rejecting your null hypothesis. And since a null hypothesis can never be rejected, with absolute certainty, there is no such thing as proof in science, there only is probability. As I said, Quantum Eraser has refused to answer my simple question. But then Betty Van Velsen came to the rescue. After failing the first time to give a satisfactory explanation, she, later on, tried again and came up with this answer. Okay, I'll try again to use the scientific method, last time I did this on the fly. Observe a natural phenomenon, water boiling. Hypothesis, water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit, 100 degrees Celsius, at sea level, 1 atmosphere of pressure, 101.325 kPa or 14.7 psi. Independent variable, heat. Dependent variable, water boiling point. Control, constant, variable, atmospheric pressure. Null hypothesis, water will not boil at 212 degrees Fahrenheit etc. She added this citation. For pure water, the boiling point is 100 degrees Celsius, 212 Fahrenheit, at one atmosphere of pressure. Department of Physics, University of Illinois. I must say, it was a brave attempt, and in itself it was consistent. Needless to say, that she stepped in every hole, that comes with Quantum Eraser's statement. After I shared my analysis with her, it became very silent on the other end. In short, one of the examples Quantum Eraser gives to illustrate his version of the scientific method, doesn't meet a single one of the requirements of his scientific method. This could mean, that his definition of the scientific method, is far too restricted to be useful. Or it could mean that Quantum Eraser doesn't understand, how his own scientific method, is supposed to work. I think it is both. Or should I say, Quantum Eraser is just a no-depth, cherry-picking citations parroting, pretender clown, flathered density monkey muppet.